On April 7, 1990, a 16-year-old named David Bureau broke into a townhouse owned by Nancy and Richard Langert. Nancy was 25 years old and three months pregnant. Richard was 30. Bureau murdered Richard execution style and shot Nancy in the stomach. As Nancy was bleeding out, she wrote a heart you in her own blood. Because David Bureau was 16 when he committed this murder, he was given a sentence known as JLWOP, or Juvenile Life Without Parole. Bureau is one of many to be serving juvenile life without parole sentences. According to a 2015 research study from a nonprofit law firm, over 2,700 individuals are serving juvenile life without parole sentences within the United States. A majority of these individuals are sentenced within five states Pennsylvania, Michigan, California, Louisiana, and Florida. In 2012, a Supreme Court case known as Miller v. Alabama addressed the issue, does the imposition of a life without parole sentence on a 14-year-old child violate the 8th and 14th Amendment's prohibition against cruel and unusual punishment? Chief Justice John G. Roberts' dissenting opinion from Miller reasoned that the court's role is to apply the law, not to answer questions about morality and social policy. So the, the big work on the teen brain at the moment is around a sort of competition between what we typically talk about as a bottom brain and a top brain. It's the difference between this top brain, which is slow and steady, the limbic system or bottom brain, which is fast uh, and starts earlier, uh, that is the great interest at the moment because that uh, suggests what's uh, syndrome that's talked about as being all accelerators and no brakes. That a lot of time the teen brain is going out wanting to do all sorts of stuff and doesn't have enough in the way of good judgment or control to not do those things that are problematic. So in the earlier Supreme Court rulings that were primarily focused on, uh, first of all it was on, on capital punishment, uh, and then later on other aspects of juvenile life without parole. But in the most recent findings there's been a much greater emphasis on the notion of life without parole being problematic because it doesn't take account of the potential greater rehabilitation from an individual who's committed that act while still a juvenile. Justice Elena Kagan wrote the majority opinion of the Miller case in which the court held that the Eighth Amendment's prohibition against cruel and unusual punishment forbids the mandatory sentencing of life in prison without the possibility of parole for juvenile homicide offenders. It grows out of the murders in my own family. Her sister Nancy and her husband Richard and their unborn baby were murdered by a juvenile. And when he was first sentenced, he got a life without parole sentence, and I was in favor of that. Um, and then over the years, I had a change of heart about just the mercilessness of that sentence, of how it doesn't recognize and reward people for growing and maturing and being coming rehabilitated and remorseful and you know it just says to them never no matter what you do no matter how sorry you are how much you've changed we're going to lock you up until the day you die for this thing you did when you were a child and I realized that that was wrong and um, so I not only you know reached out to the young man who killed my sister to you know convey that to him but also, you know, met the family members of other young people serving that sentence and really kind of got to understand the pain that they go through with no hope for that person, that that person that they love is going to be locked away forever. And so that's kind of been the source of my advocating for not release for everybody because not everybody's capable of being released. Some people aren't rehabilitated or remorseful and, you know, capable of reentering safely. But many people are and so that's why everybody I think needs to have some kind of a second look. As of January twenty fifth, twenty sixteen, the Supreme Court decided that the decision made in Miller v. Alabama must be applied retroactively to those serving juvenile life without parole sentences, leaving hope for parole in their futures.